Hello and welcome to another tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. In this tutorial we're going to have a look at Turbo Pi, which means you're going to learn how to overclock your Pi safely and easily. We'll learn what overclocking and overvolting is, and why you might want to overclock. Plus, be sure to check out the Raspberry Pi community magazine, called the Magpie, for my full written up article, because you've probably been wondering why I haven't, been to do, haven't done a video in the past week and a half. It's because I've been writing up a article for the community magazine it's a three page spread it's all about overclocking loads of good information in the magpie and it's great for everyone on the spectrum from beginners all the way up to experienced programmers strongly recommend you read it so this tutorial is part of my Raspberry Pi Linux basics tutorials in which I show you all just the basics and how to navigate around your Pi and just enjoy your Raspberry Pi experience a lot easier. Be sure to check out all my other videos on my channel. What you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi that doesn't have to be connected to the internet. I'm running the Raspbian distribution, which is the only distribution that this tutorial is going to work. Other distributions you can overclock on, though I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial. I have a revision one. 256 megabyte Raspberry Pi and I say this because a few days ago from the time of filming the, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced that their new well not really new their revised Raspberry Pi now has double the amount of RAM 512 megs and I'm not I've no idea how this is going to affect my tutorial I doubt it'll affect it much I just thought it's worth mentioning you're going to need to be able to type into your Raspberry Pi so a keyboard you don't need a mouse and you're going to also need to be able to view what it's outputting, so hook it up to a TV or SSH it, which will probably be recovered in one of my later tutorials. So let's get on with it. First, what is overclocking and overvolting? So, the Raspberry Pi's processor has only a 700 MHz clock speed. What does this mean? The clock speed of the device is how fast it can perform operations. It's measured in megahertz with 1000 megahertz in a gigahertz. So basically, the more megahertz, the better the device. However, there is one way of getting more power and performance overclocking. And thanks to the new Raspbian image, it's easier than ever. Overclocking is a process for making a component or computer run faster than the default speed, though normally it involves a trade off extra power for unstability and decreased processor life. Though for the Pi, these side effects are so minimal. You'd be foolish not to overclock your Pi. If you want to overclock your Pi to a higher amount, you'll need to do something called overvolting. Overvolting means when the voltage that runs through a device is increased. You can then have a higher overclock. With overclocking and overvolting, there's one thing you need to be aware of, as well as some of the dangers that I'll go over in a minute. How far you can overclock depends on two things, your own Pi and also your power supply. What you have to remember is that every Raspberry Pi is different and so every Pi has different limits. As I said, your power supply is important too. Without a good one, you'll fail to get a high enough overvolt. The power supply that I use is a Kindle charger. It's both high quality and fairly inexpensive. You can get it for about under 10 pounds, I think. And that runs on five volts with 850 milliamps. Uh, you need five volts to power your Pi, and you need a, a minimum of 700 milliamps of current to be able to work the keyboard and the mouse if you've got them plugged in but I reckon I recommend and so does the foundation to get one with over 700 milliamps so most people that I know run it on 1 milliamp some 2 milliamps anyway there are several things on the Pi that you can overclock the CPU which is the processor and the GPU, GPU which is the graphics core and also the RAM the default speeds for all of these are as follows CPU is 700 megahertz, as I've said before. The graphics core, the GPU, is 250 megahertz, and the SRAM or the RAM is 400 megahertz. Warnings and dangers. Since the foundation announced Turbo Mode, these dangers have practically been removed. However, for disk length purposes, here they are. Changing any of the default settings may result in damage to your Pi. Don't worry, this is virtually impossible to do. Overclocking and especially overvolting will reduce the life of your Pi, but don't worry about this either as a life drop is crazy. It changes roughly from around 20 years to 10 to 15 years. 
believe me, that's not going to be much of a problem. Anyway, now we're going to need to get down to business, and I'm doing this on a brand new, fresh install of Raspbian. I'd just like to say thanks to both the Foundation and the Raspbian developers for updating Raspbian. It's definitely improved from last time. Keep the update, updates coming, I say. If you're using an older version of Raspbian, you then need to update and upgrade. So, I'll just show you how to do that. So now, as I said, we're going to need to update if you're using an older version of Raspbian. If you're not, just skip ahead a bit. So boot up your Pi and then enter the terminal. And um, you don't actually have to boot up into the desktop environment. I'm just in the default terminal, which you welcomed with upon starting your Pi. Now, I did lie earlier saying that it doesn't have to be connected to the internet. That's only if you have the newest version of Raspbian. And, um, but to update it, you will need to be connected to the internet. So, the first line of text we're going to input is sudo at get update two and signs. Normally found on key 7 or your keyboard, they're sort of the squiggly ands. And then what else we're going to put in is space sudo at get upgrade minus y. So in total, it's going to look like this. And and sudo up get upgrade minus y. Now, press enter once you've finished typing that in. That'll take about half an hour. And off we have an update of pi. Now, still from the terminal, type this command sudo rasi pi config. So, there. Now, what's going to press enter? And what's that's going to let us? You'll be greeted by this blue screen. And this is the configurations menu. Really helpful, as you can see, there's quite a few things you can change, like the time, keyboard layout, etc. 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 All we want is the option that says update. So it's here. Again, the URL browser pie will have to be connected to the internet at this stage. And press enter. Now, using the now, if that exits for some reason, just go, come back into Raspberry Pi config, and then we're going to need the option that says overclock. So highlight it is this one, and press enter. Now you'll probably be greeted with this screen. Be aware that overclocking may reduce the lifetime of your Raspberry Pi. Don't worry about that, just click OK. And then you're going to be greeted by five overclocking options. Now, there are five options for you to choose from, I just said. There's none, modest, medium, high or turbo. And now, using the arrow keys, select what, you, what one you'd like for your Pi. Now, none is just the default, as I said, 700 MHz CPU, 250 MHz. GPU, 400 MHz RAM, 0 overvolt. Modest is 800 MHz CPU, 300 MHz GPU, 400 MHz RAM, and a 0 overvolt. Medium is 900 MHz CPU, 333 MHz GPU, 450 MHz RAM, and a 2 overvolt. High, which is the one that I'm running my Pi on currently, is 950 MHz ARM CPU, 450 MHz GPU, 450 MHz RAM, and a 6 overvolt. And then all the way up to Turbo, which is what the Raspberry Pi Foundation advertises you being able to get 50% more performance from your Pi. A 1000 MHz CPU, as I said earlier, 1000 MHz equals 1 GHz. 500 MHz GPU, 500 MHz RAM, and a 6 overvolt. So, all you have to do is just select which one you want to do. As I said, mine's on high. You press enter. Probably see something like this. Press enter to that. And then you've done it. But remember that all changes made in this configuration menu won't actually be what well, you won't actually be able to see them until you reboot. So click on finish, and it'll come up with a screen that says, "Would you like to reboot now?" Let's just reboot. Uh, so I'm running on my mine on high, as I said, just because I get a little bit nervous about running mine on turbo. But don't let that stop you from trying. Really, there is nothing to worry about if you're running yours on Turbo. I know plenty of people who run it day and night on Turbo, and they've reported no no uh, things happening amiss. And uh, you probably, at startup, you probably won't 
recognise any difference. But this is because a, a CPU and a GPU and RAM speed and they are sort of dynamic and um, this means that if you're using less graphically intense, less CPU intense applications then it's going to be about 700 megahertz. But then if you play something like Quake 3, which I've got a video on how to actually get it to work, that's going to go, if you're on 1000 megahertz, it's going to go all the way up to 1000 megahertz and you'll see a definite change from the previous 700 megahertz that your Pi was default set. So as just as a stress test, I recommend um, giving Quake 3 a go just to see if your Pi doesn't randomly shut down. So, but hold on a sec, what if my Pi doesn't boot up anymore? Well, don't worry, you haven't broken your Pi, or your SD card, all you've done is set your Pi's overclock too high and it can no longer boot up. So, this is easily fixed. The clever Raspbian developers have added a function similar to recovery mode on an iPhone or an iPod. This allows you to boot into a basic skeleton of an OS and change things that might prevent it from working, like Raspberry Pi config. It's how to boot into it. I can't show you this because for some reason my Raspberry Pi's keyboard, which is just a Microsoft one, it's... It, the sh it doesn't recognize a shift button for some reason. I've tried remapping the keyboard, so I can only really guess what's going to happen next. I, I know quite well. But, so, first off, you need to shut down your Raspberry Pi. Turn it off, just with, safely with sudo shutdown minus h0. Now, reconnect it to power, but whilst holding the shift button down on your keyboard. Shift button's this one. And you'll you'll see loads of whizzing lines of text normal like normal not like normal boot up and this and th that's all normal and that just means that you're in recovery mode. If you go ahead and try command like login, of course, and if you go ahead and try command like start x, which will boot up the desktop environment, you're going to see it fail. However, we can still access Raspberry Pi config, the function we use to change your overclock. So now, just like last time, go into Raspberry Pi config with the command sudo raspberry pi config press enter and we'll be greeted by that familiar, familiar blue screen then again just like last time go down to overclock and select which one you want to change it to. So if you put yours on say high and it doesn't work, go down one, go on to medium. If it still doesn't work, yeah, continue going downwards. And if every overclock f setting fails, then I suggest getting a new power supply. If you're using like a generic no, no brand unit, it's probably found like ones from eBay, then normally the power stats on the plug can be wrong. This is rarely the case with official phone chargers or in my case my Kindle charger. If you're worried that your power supply is bad and you don't know what one to get, I suggest having a look on the Raspberry Pi wiki where there's a full list of all of the working chargers, keyboards, mouses, USB hubs. It's a really good resource. And that can be found at http um, colon forward slash forward slash elinux.org forward slash rpi, spelt caps r, caps p, lowercase i. And then underscore capital H um, non capital U non capital B, and so that's a really useful website. But what if you cannot boot into a recovery mode either because your shift button doesn't work, just like mine, or because you use your Pi through SSH or another remote accessing application? Now, if that's the case, you're going to we're going to need to change your overclock by by using another computer. So at this time, you're going to need access to another computer with an SD card slot. In my case, I shall be using a window machine, but this should work with Mac. I haven't really tried it, but it should. If your machine runs Linux, even better. So I'll just show you how to do that.